And well, when the American prisoners arrived at Dartmoor, uh, they entered a very interesting way of life. Uh, there were interesting groups, interesting factions that were formed. It seems like very quickly the French developed a class system in the prison. You would start off with what they call the lords. The lords were actually able to go out and do business with people in the town of Princetown. Like they didn't have to really stay in the prison. They can go out and as long as they stayed in Princetown, you're fine. Then you had, and I presume those guys were like officers. Then you had um, your artisan class. These were the guys that were making these types of crafts like you're seeing displayed here so they can trade for goods. And then you had Le Romain. <laughs> Le Romain. Uh, you might be asking, why do they call Le Romain? Well, uh, because they looked like they were Romans when they wore their blankets. Because they would trade away all of their clothing and go nude with the exception of a blanket as a tu uh, tunic. And yeah, Le Romain. Uh, the British thought they were pretty weird and they isolated them to block number four. They just they left the lay no main, the nude colony, do whatever they were gonna do over there. <laughs> we're not we're not going over and checking on them. They're, they're fine, they're fine. <laughs> they're not fine, but they're fine. Dirty French. Now, when the Americans enter this interesting class system, uh, they very quickly, some of the white Americans uh reach out to the agent who or how we would understand the warden of the prison and request that they be relocated to another block. Uh, initially, there wasn't enough Americans to ne need to be in all the blocks, so they're also being put at number four. <laughs> now, they weren't requesting a transfer because they wanted to get from, well, they probably are wanting to get away from the nude colony, but they also request him because they did not want to be around black prisoners. They don't want to be around prisoners of African descent, including... Black Americans who had been in prison side by side with the white Americans had served as soldiers or as sailors that ended up here. And the British were initially perplexed because they're like, well, you're all prisoners here. I mean, we can move you to another block. You're not going to really change matter. You're all stuck in the same place. But the white Americans insisted that they wanted to be in a different facility away from their other counterpart. And of course, you could probably imagine the black Americans, you know, one the, the black prisoners that are being segregated, they're looking at the white prisoners and then are looking at the lay remain and going. So <laughs> the white American prisoners got their way on the museum that operates at the Dartmoor prison. They claim that this makes Dartmoor prison the first segregated prison in American history. I'm not certain about that. I don't know too much about prison history in the United States of America. So this might be the first instance of somebody directly requesting for a segregation. But I would presume, considering the time period we're in in the United States at this point, that there were still a variety of segregated prisons in the South. That's just me personally. I don't. I haven't done enough research on that. But so, yes, uh, this became a segregated prison exclusively for the Americans because the white Americans didn't want to be with the black Americans who had just served side by side them a few weeks ago on warships and on battlefields. So they moved to another block. Uh, number four block was just for Les Romaine and, and the black American prisoners. But something interesting happens. In 1814, we took a little trip along. Uh, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're going to get to that. In 1814, uh, Napoleon's uh, army is defeated for the first time, and he is going to go into exile for the first time, which means the war, the Napoleonic Wars are over for the umpteenth time. And the French prisoners are leaving Dartmoor en masse, leaving really just American prisoners of war. Now, by this point, the number of American prisoners had greatly inflated to several thousand. I had not one number say up to 6,000. I'm not too certain on that. Uh, they ended up inflating to several thousand. And with the absence of the Napoleonic Wars going on, things were a little more relaxed at Dartmoor now. And the new agent at the time, and a guy, I think it was by the name of Captain Shortland, Captain Shortland uh, decided, all right, I'm not going to keep you guys all penned up in your blocks anymore. You're, you have a little more mobility around the prison to get out, stretch your legs, to participate in the market. I'm going to be a little more lax with you guys because you guys... We're sending the full might of the British Army now over to your country. You're about to get your whooped. So it'll be over very shortly. 
And everybody's like, okay, okay, we'll hang around for a bit. Well, something interesting is starting to happen in the number four block. So a gentleman who is only known as King Dick ends up becoming the leader of number four block. Now, the, there's various different accounts on who King Dick was. Uh, some say that he was a free man that came from Massachusetts and was captured on the USS Chesapeake. Others say that he was a slave from Virginia that ran away and ran into the services of the United States to get away from slavery and ended up getting taken prisoner. Some say actually he was from Britain or no, not Britain, that he ended up getting um, captured by the British early, before the war even started and was impressed into their service. Nobody knows really where this guy came from, but he did exist. So by all counts, most memoirs from the prison, they talk about this King Dick. And King Dick was described as a gentleman standing anywhere from six foot seven to seven foot tall. Uh, he ha was a bare knuckle boxer who wore a bear skin cap and had two servants by his side at all times. And he had very quickly taken control of number four block. And he was judge, jury, and executor for that block. Now, it's not all what you think it is. It isn't, it isn't all uh, the Duke from Escape from New York. No, actually, that's a very good description. Uh, King Dick is the War of 1812 equivalent of Isaac Hayes. I've said that right now. We're going forward. Uh, but the, that, that should have been a movie made in the 80s. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, what King Dick ended up doing was he ascended power, uh, asserted his dominance over the number four block, and then he used uh, the, the profits that he was given, and by profits, I'm assuming they were trinkets that the prisoners had made that they were throwing in for uh, gambling needs. The profits that he was skimming off of the gambling in the number four block, even though gambling was illegal in his prison, uh, he would be able to use to acquire excess goods when the market opened. And that included items that would include instruments, would include uh, artistry utensils, would include costumes to stage plays, would include all this extracurricular equipment and all these extracurricular activities were hosted in the loft of the number four block. And I actually got a quote here from uh, one of the prisoners that describes what was going up in the loft, in the hay loft. In number four, the Black's prison, I've spent considerable time for in the third story or cockloft, they are writing, fencing, boozing, dancing, and many other schools, which is very diverting to a young person. Indeed, there is more amusement in this prison than in all the rest of them. So, yeah, jokes on the people that wanted to be segregated from the number four block. Not a number four block, it's a talk of the whole town. Well, the whole talk of Prince Town. And since I mentioned uh, Captain Shortland and kind of lacks the restrictions, most of the Americans, uh, they very quickly uh, decide, white Americans decide, okay, uh, forget about the racism stuff. Uh, King Dick's very cool. We're going to go over there and have fun in the number four loft. So number four, uh, lo uh, number four was the place to be in Dartmoor. And a little bit more about King Dick. Now, some say his name was Richard Crafus due to a disposition he delivers about an incident we're about to talk about. Others say his name was Richard uh, Seavers. Uh, his this name shows up in various newspapers in the 1820s and 30s, referring to him as King Dick, a famed boxer who ended up setting up a school in Boston to teach boxing and may have also been a auxiliary policeman for Boston City Police. Uh, interesting individual uh, this King Dick was. He, they, 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 he's one of those guys, like there's enough mythology around him when he go down the rabbit hole. You're like, this guy needs a movie. Or a miniseries, or like a graphic novel. You, you, please, pl again, again. He is the he is the Duke of Dartmoor. <laughs> so imagine Isaac Hayes, the Duke, escaped from New York, walking around in 1814. That's who we're talking about right here. It's awesome. It's awesome. I love it.